The indie video is on hold. Mental health is keeping me from writing it. I hope you understand. Meanwhile, here's an F1 in a nutshell. Talking about shit in Formula One that nobody likes, it's in a nutshell! Formula One's roots and traditions stem back decades before Formula One was even a thing. And one of the surviving memoirs of the olden days of Grand Prix racing is the Autodromo Nazionale Monza, a racetrack that's been in the conscious mind since 1922, with mixed reviews. Think of it as the neutral milk hotel of racetracks. The first ever Monza Grand Prix started its life with a driver death. Yeah, that sounds about right. And would have four driver deaths in three years. And when you see the picture of the original track, it makes perfect sense. They would race on the main track that the majority of the race fans know, and then the other half of the lap on a big ass oval. The first Grand Prix lasted over 5 hours and 40 minutes, and had only 3 drivers finish the race. The third place driver, Pierre de Vizcaya, I probably fucked up the pronunciation horribly, finishing 4 laps behind. The race was won by Pietro Bordino in a Fiat 804. Not that my Generation Z audience would care. Jesus Christ, that's the most baby boomer thing I've ever said. Fucking hell. As the years roll by and safety has become more of a forefront in Grand Prix racing, different variations of the track were soon to follow. The giant oval section stayed in F1 until 1962 after the death of Von Trips. I know he didn't die on the oval, but it played a big role in having the oval section completely abolished from the race entirely, thus making the race uh, somewhat safer. The thinking at the time was that the speed and the added stress caused by it would be minimised if the oval was taken out of the equation. People in the 1960s were stupid. Especially in motorsports. Nowadays, the oval is used as a road rash water slide for racing enthusiasts and used in sim racing sessions of IndyCar pack racing on R Factor 2. So its legacy lives on. In very weird places. In more recent years, after a few more variations to the track, it was given a chicane. Then that chicane was remade into another chicane. And that same chicane was changed again in 2000, as an attempt to create overtaking opportunities and reduce overall speed during the race. But that hasn't done anything for the spectacle of the race, which, let's be honest, hardly had any to begin with. Nowadays it's used as a top speed benchmark in F1, which makes no sense because we get faster speed in tracks like Baku and Mexico City. So what is Monza actually useful for? Raising the percentage of alcohol poisoning in Ferrari fans? Or causing the deaths of drivers, riders and marshals? Who knows? Now despite all this, the racetrack is miles and miles better than Monaco. There are still some classic races that have come out of this track. Personally, I would recommend the 1971 Italian Grand Prix, which had the closest finish in F1 history. The 1995 Italian Grand Prix, which had bitter rivals at the time. Michael Schumacher and Damon Hill duke it out, with varying results. And the 2011 Italian Grand Prix, where professional sadness man Fernando Alonso and professional madness man Sebastian Vettel also duke it out with varying results. So that's about everything we have time for. If you want to support my content creation or other endeavours, please consider donating to either my coffee or my PayPal if you want to make one-off donations. Anything is appreciated and it will help me with getting content out more often and finding the motivation so you guys can have content to watch. So that's about it. Join us next time where I realise that F1 in a nutshell is just a B-Tech chain bear F1. Sayonara!